Then I think we already did it. Yeah. We already did the subscribe yeah. thing. Okay. Hi, this is Nam from Easy Sunday Club. Hi, this is Kathy. And today we're gonna, this is our second part of our in-depth conversation about FAIR. Uh, FAIR is a pretty awesome platform. It's an online marketplace that connects makers and the brands to small retailers and buyers. We've been on the platform for eight months now as makers and uh, we wanted to share our experience so far. Um, FAIR is kind of a, we liken it to Etsy, except instead of a marketplace for, for consumers find unique goods, it's a marketplace for wholesale buyers to find similar items. Yep. And uh, we had a lot to say about FAIR, so we broke this up into two videos. In the first video, uh, throwing up our boring agenda, we talked about a little bit of background on FAIR, and we also talked about the pros and cons of being uh, a retailer or buyer on FAIR. If you would like to see that, we'll provide a link below and you can check that out. In this video, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of being a maker or a seller on FAIR, and also additional considerations and final thoughts about selling on FAIR. So, hope you're along with us for the ride, and let's get into it. We are makers, so we want to get into the maker's perspective, so... Um, yeah, so yeah. as a small business owner who makes physical products, it's great to have an, a marketplace where I can reach, potentially reach over 40,000 uh, buyers who may be interested in my products. Um, also, as a family, a young family with a one-year-old, you know, the idea of setting things, setting up a booth at a trade show in another state, hauling all of our equipment and inventory, finding babysitter, just to, and spending thousands of dollars just seems impractical and not cost efficient. Uh, but we still want to grow our wholesale business. So this seems like the perfect, I don't know, savior to yeah. our greatest challenge um, while growing our wholesale business. So it saves time and, and cost. And like I said, we it costs us nothing to join. Yeah. Um, and the third is, now we're able to sell direct to the buyer. Uh, we don't work with any agents currently. Uh, so this is kind of a replacement for an agent. They charge a commission like an agent would. And no, we don't really have to do anything once we set up our store fund. As long as we keep our collection fresh up there, um, we get orders a few yeah. times a month. And and if, if anything that this, this uh the site will disrupt the most. It will probably be the sales agents and mm. the middleman. I think that this will probably reduce their footprint the most um, compared to the buyers and the sellers. Yeah, they're not, yeah. Obviously they're not the same, but it does pose yeah. a threat. Yeah. Um, it's very easy to set up. From my own experience, I was invited to um, set up a profile there and I got on a call with one of their account managers who was spent you know, a good half an hour walking me through with their platform. I even had someone, um, I think a designer, to help me set up, upload my products, product images. So I had a head start and everything was, I was up and running in less than a week. And um, by the second week, I was already receiving orders. So yeah. we, we, it sounds, yeah. it was a very pleasant, onboarding experience yeah. I must say. From our opinion it is more buyer focused but if you look at the incentive for FAIR that's how they get paid. They get paid off a percentage when people buy but also they do need they do also focus on the makers and the sellers because if there's not a wide variety of products that people are willing to buy then they're not going to be able to close close that sale as well. But um, so they their onboarding experience and their customer service to try to get more products and sellers on there is quite good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just like for the retailer, for us, it's a centralized place to manage our line sheet. Traditionally, I would have to send a PDF of my line sheet to each retailer I'm contacting, not knowing if they'll ever see it or open the file if it's too big for their email inbox. Um, I have to manage each account 
very disparately, some through email, some through call or text, uh, other times through, you know, if they're local, through these in-person visits. So, and, you know, and most of all, being able to manage the payments in one area is great too. So for makers, we have the option to get paid out right away, minus a credit card fee if we want to get paid for the order immediately, or we can wait 30 days to get the full amount without the credit card fee. I opted for the 30 day just because I can afford to wait that long. Yeah. Um, and no, that 30, that 3% is a fee that I would have had to pay if I were to invoice my, my retailers outside of fair. So I mean, that's a pretty attractive incentive yeah. personally. And lastly, there are risks. Um, just to piggyback off the last point, there's less risk on my end. I know with some of my retailers, I offer a 30 day, net 30 day payment term. If it's someone that I already have a relationship with, but other times, no, I don't, I would say I don't always collect the payment, um, at, before I ship the products, which, you know, maybe it's my own accountability. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that, but, um, with fair, you don't get notified in an order unless the retailer completes an order and pays for it. So you're almost, you're always guaranteed a payout. And like I said, you can choose to get paid out right away or after 30 days if you want to save the credit card fees. Yeah. Um, so let's get into some of the cons of, uh, from a maker perspective. And we don't want to create like a, a poop list. <laughs> it's more just, call outs that we have about our experience uh, thus far on our fair journey. So yeah, um, just, yeah. Oh, like <laughs> I said, there's a lot of good things going for fair yeah. and um, just, yeah, I've had a great experience so far, but nothing is perfect. Right. Yeah. So we're just sharing candid experience of, as makers and hopefully with these things in mind, you'd be, you would be more mindful as you're going into the platform and, no, we'll talk about yeah. what to be mindful for. <laughs> and also, we don't want to piss off fair and get kicked off. <laughs> so, don't take this personally. Oh, maybe it's there's just, a reason why yeah, there just, are no YouTube videos about yeah. fair right now. Yeah, maybe. We're but one it's of the just, first, yeah, but, but we, we felt compelled yeah. to... We honestly just video. want to educate and share our business experience with this, with, with this great platform. So, yeah. 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 So... Back uh, to the cons or concerns. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we highlighted earlier, most of the incentives are more buyer focused. Uh, we understand they're trying to grow their base and um, buyers are the ones who are paying the fees at the end of the day. Yeah. And um, in regards about, to the... Yeah, yeah let's talk, talk about, about fees. The fees. <laughs> so they charge 25% for first order, 15% for reorders. And if it's a buyer that you have an established relationship with that you're referring into FAIR or someone that you met at, let's say, a trade show and you're bringing them onto the platform, then you don't get charged a fee, which I think that's very reasonable. And I've had several orders that fall under that category. Yeah. But the 25% is hefty. Yeah. Um, with the reorders, a call out, it's 15% for every reorder for the lifetime of the, the relationship. Definitely. And if you think about why they're charging 0% for existing, um, for existing accounts that you're bringing in, it's like, it's, you're actually helping them with their marketing, right? So you're, um, you're doing marketing for them to get them to be on the platform that gives them another potential buyer to buy stuff on their platform mm -hmm. and it continues to expand their footprint. So that's kind of why the fees are set up the, the, the way, the way it is. Yeah. And they would enjoy, they, as in the new buyer that we've referred in, would enjoy the same incentive as, you know, what we've mentioned earlier in an earlier slide. Uh, it's difficult to build long-term relationships. Again, yeah, this is from my eight month, experience dealing with fair retailers versus my retail the retailers that I've had to do the hard work of doing the outreach and courtship and you know just months and years of building that relationship outside of fair I found that my reorders are not just not there for fair um, for fair retailers um, I have gotten quite a few orders through fair first time orders but the repeat rate is nothing compared to my own retailers or yeah outside of fair um 
this analogy that we came up with one night when we're making this deck <laughs> is it kind of reminds us of online dating. Online dating, like 15 years ago, we didn't have the Match.coms and the Bumbles and Hinges of the world. We had to dress up, go to a bar with our friends, single yeah. friends, or wingmen, wingwomen, or you no, know, we had to go to a party and like strike a conversation with strangers that we think speed were cute. Da speed dating events. <laughs> go to speed dating yeah. events, the lock and chain. Anyway, yeah. that's another YouTube video yeah. probably. But, but uh, now, yeah. no, we can have. We as single people out there <laughs> have access to thousands of people in your hood, uh, in your pajamas, at the ease of a swipe. And we do feel like the long-term impact of that is it desensitizes that relationship building, the initial relationship building yeah. you know, momentum. Because our, our strongest relationship with retailers are the ones that um, they know about us, they know about our family, they know about what products and our goals are, and we know about their retailers, same thing, we know about them, we know about their family, we know about their product, their, their goals and stuff like that, and they uh, keep us um, top of mind because there's an emotional relationship and they uh, continue to push um, our products and help us with their sales, and in return, we're helping them grow their business as well. Yeah. But with this, it's like, you have retailers who have all these choices and if they're, if they can be really fickle, they can just have, um, buy a couple products from you one month and then if they don't like the yeah. experience or they're, they're, they're tired of your product and they can just swipe left and then go to another retailer. Yeah. So is it swipe right? I don't know. Yeah, swipe, swipe, swipe left. Or, yeah, swipe, swipe, swipe left or swipe, swipe right. Yeah, which, is, which yeah. is why I feel like part of my experience with not having these reorders is because of that. And also because they're, the retailers have free shipping on the first order, what is to, you know, what motivates them from getting a, yeah. from placing a second order. Um, and it's also harder to vet retailers. Yeah. Um, as makers, we have to apply for an account, or in my case, I was invited to join because another retailer has referred me in, so to speak. Um, but for retailers, you can just apply for an account. And I feel like 100% of the time, they're they're in and what I hear what I've heard from a few other makers, makers is yeah. that sometimes they are skeptical of the orders are coming in when they haven't spoken to the retailers they don't know if it's a good fit or sometimes they feel like the size of the order is so small that it's yeah so it could be a personal order. yeah like they could just be trying to be shady and buying trying to buy a bunch of your products for 50% off and be able to gift it during holiday or something like that right yeah. as opposed to um, if you know the store you can actually help uh, set up the display you know you're that you know that they're selling your products in the display so um, maybe this is something that is on fair's radar and they, they can do a little bit more due diligence on that or, or create more guidelines and restrictions but um, it's just something in the back of our mind that, of like the, the potential, um, yeah. it, it goes to the long-term relationship with, with these Yeah, I mean, a lot of these concerns, if they're not our personal experience, it's just through conversations with other makers. So if anything, if fair you're watching this, this is helpful customer insight <laughs> and that you're hearing it from, you know, at the ground level. The next one is something I've heard through conversation with other makers is for those who are working with agents, there is some conflict of interest with certain territories where they are working with an agent so no fair there's no there's no territorial boundaries um it's just a huge you know up to global marketplace so sometimes the agent their agent may be working on a territory and bringing in accounts that um already exist on fair so there's no it's it's a little bit hard to manage that is what i heard and i don't know if there's a solution around that we don't work with agents, so it's not of a personal concern for us, but we still want to bring it up. Yeah. The next one is opaque return policy. From my onboarding call, I've heard that if, um, if an item or items don't sell, the retailer can return at free of charge to FAIR um, instead of to us, the makers. And what FAIR does is I think they will collect those items and sell them to other interested buyers at a discount. Yeah. I don't it, know if that's changed since then, but... It's, it, it, it's, it's a policy that's subject to change, but the bottom line out of it is that because of the return policy, um, some make makers have complained that they have lost visibility 
onto whether where their wh where their products are, who's who it's being sold to, and at what price. Mm -hmm. So that's just a risk. And um, if you are a control freak and want control over all of that, mm -hmm. then it would be really bad. If you just don't care and just like, <laughs> you know, just uh, um, yeah. let fair handle it and, and 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 sell it and get rid of it however they want, then that's fine. But just it's, again, all of these are just call outs. Yeah. And last but not least, Fair, like Etsy and Amazon, is not your own platform. So you're at the whims of their business strategy and priorities <laughs> at the moment, yeah. uh, which or, could lead uh, to changing algorithms. Yeah. Or if they become public, uh, whatever their board wants, right? Yeah. Or whatever's, wherever they're pressuring or whatever corporate dysfunction is happening at any of these companies, right? <laughs> yeah, and in our video about Etsy, uh, we talked about how you know, Etsy has a, uh, it's harder to build a brand as a maker on Etsy than having your own e-commerce website. Same thing with FAIR. If a retailer bought something from you on FAIR, who's to say, no, they could general, just they could just generalize it as, oh, I purchased this great baby blanket from FAIR without really remembering what the brand or what the yeah. owner behind it and the story is. Yeah, so like when they are selling your product in their store, you would hope that they would say, hey, this product is from Easy Sunday Club. Um, I know the artist, Kathy Zhang, and she makes great products. Mm -hmm. But there is a risk, like people who buy things from Etsy, when you ask them where, where they got like a sign from or some sort of craft table, they're like, oh, I got it from Etsy. And like, there's your brand recognition out the window, right? Yeah. So again, because just the fairs yeah. and the Etsy's have spent tons of money into branding their company, it's much easier to remember Etsy and Fair, these single no, business names that we can't we can't afford to buy a domain name off yeah. of. So we just can't compete against uh, them off the branding alone. Yeah. So final thoughts about Fair. Uh, you should use it. It's <laughs> uh, so in general, great for buyers because that's how they make their revenue. Uh, kind of mixed for uh, sellers. Um, some of the things we called out was that it's not your platform uh, and it's harder to build a relationship, a lot of one and done. Um, so what does that all mean? What should you do? Uh, first thing that we recommend is that you should diversify. Just like dating or my uh, humble recommendation for dating, uh, you shouldn't just do all online dating and close off in-person uh, referrals and potential relationships that you meet from people in person. And you shouldn't just do in-person dating and shut off all of uh, online dating because you prevent yourself from meeting this um, other people who are outside your friends group. You should do both. Um, in this new fragmented uh, digital uh, future that we live in, um, we, uh, if you want to grow your wholesale business, you will be on these platforms and kind of like a lobster trap, it will bring in retail you normally wouldn't meet. And then you can also continue to do the trades, uh, trade show circuit, work with agents or do cold calling to try to meet people in person as well. Yeah. And that's the best way to, um, to, uh, um, to continue to meet and foster those relationships, but also so, that, so you're not totally reliant on the platform of fair which is subject to change as we called out before. Yeah, and I know what you're thinking, like why is everything so complicated? Why do we have to do this and that and Instagram and <laughs> Pinterest and everything? But I think the complication and complexity of the world we live in and the, bus the business world we live in is also what presents great opportunity to start and grow small businesses like yeah. this, right? Without the Instagrams and the fairs and the Etsy's in the world, we wouldn't even be able to kick off or launch our business uh, in the first place. It's just, you have to decide when it's time to diversify or whether you have time, if you have to choose between this and that, like you are it's, you have to make the decision on what to prioritize. But I would say all of these technologies overall, like as far as building small business goes, makes things much easier for someone to start. Yeah. And then the last thing we want to say about FAIR is you got to do the maths. <laughs> so you got to make sure maths. it, yeah, maths. You got to make sure uh, selling on FAIR makes sense for your product and for your business. If you're selling products on there and with the commission fees that they are charging, you're taking huge losses, then maybe not worth it. Um, if you're 
barely scraping by with the margin on the first order, but on the reorders, um, you're making a sizable profit, then continue to work with them. But you have to um, sit down and create the business case or think about those considerations that we called out before of um, making a profit off of the products as well as the um, admin uh, and fulfillment um, time that it will take to, to fulfill these orders to these new retailers. Yeah, and we'll share some thoughts about wholesale as a business model too on another video. Once it's ready, it will be linked at the end. Yeah, that's our tease so you can continue to watch. <laughs> And it's also pressure for us to make another video. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we yeah. hope this uh, presentation was helpful. Yeah. Uh, like I said, feel free to screenshot it and uh, leave a comment if you have other questions or if you don't want to be seen with your common, your shared concerns, feel free to DM us <laughs> on Instagram or email us. You yeah. know where to find us. Um, yeah, just we want to hear about your feedback and experience with FAIR. So just leave a comment and we will respond. Um, continue to, if you really like the video, continue to su subscribe and, and, and support our viewership. And we really appreciate you taking the time with us today. Yeah. Thank you for watching.